Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Den. I'm of course your host Armando Venditti. Hoping you guys are having a good Thursday. Beautiful day outside. Uh, time for another video in this episode of the Music Den. I'm going to be doing another installment of Album Spotlight. Now this is on a band that I have not covered yet on the channel. The band is The Cure and the album is Disintegration. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, the band, the band, The Cure, uh, are a band from England, um, fronted by Mr. Robert Smith, a rhythm guitarist, keyboardist, basically multi-instrumentalist. Um, they released their debut album in 1979 called Three Imaginary Boys. Disintegration is their eighth album, released on Electra as I adjust my glasses, Electra Records uh, in North America and Fiction in the UK. Um, the sound of The Cure. The Cure are basically listed as um, a goth rock, new wave, um, alternative rock band. Um, they've had multiple members over the years. It's basically been a revolving door uh, for the band. The Two mainstay members of the band have been uh, Robert Smith since their inception. And a close second comes uh, Mr. Uh, Simon Gallup on bass. Now, uh, for me, I first heard of The Cure in 1983 uh, from a single that they had called Love Cats. It was a non-album single released on the Japanese Whispers compilation um, and it was a real catchy, quirky tune. Um, a very much acoustic instrumentation, although it could be wrong, but you could definitely hear a stand-up bass being used and uh, Django piano, etc. And the video for it was very um, interesting, to say the least. And it's got to be said, I mean, Robert Smith as a front man, uh, his look... Um, I wouldn't say androgynistic, but he has a look. Uh, wears makeup, um, lipstick, and the rouge and the eyeliner. Um, a very definite look that he has about uh, that most bands had at that time. Um, the inspiration for this video uh, is this box set that I got in the mail on Monday. And I almost showed it to you, and I'm about to show it to you right now. It is this box set from The Cure called uh, Join the Dots. It is a four CD, 70 song compilation released in 2004 through Electra in North America and Fiction in the UK. This is the Fiction Polydor release. Um, in listening to this uh, compilation, there are four CDs, as I said, 70 tracks. The first disc alone uh, has 22 tracks on it. So there's a lot of music on this. Um, and just reading the opening blurb in the pages, uh, Robert Smith had said that when he was a boy and whenever he would buy a single, he would always flip the B-side and listen to it. Because to him, you know, he was hoping to maybe find a little gem, a little nugget that nobody else knew about but him, right? Or a track that wasn't on the album. And he has become quite uh, prolific throughout his career in The Cure. He has written the majority of the uh, music for The Cure. Um, some people would say that he could be a bit dictatorial. But um, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, in, in listening to these tracks, um, they range from 1978 from their inception to 2001. So it's quite a, a cross-section of music over the years. Um, the music on this compilation that I've heard so far, um, I've heard one disc, is stellar. It is quite good. It is 
left of center. Um, the music in terms of arrangements um, is very short and to the point, you know, uh, two, two and a half minutes, three and a half minutes. Um, as they progressed in their uh, songwriting uh, career, they would, I'm just going to put this over here, they would continue um, writing more complex, intricate, arranged tracks, more, I guess, morose, more darker themes. Um, and that's where uh, Disintegration comes in. Disintegration is their eighth release, released on May 2nd, 1989. It is their follow-up to the release of Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me from 1987. Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me was basically their arrival into the mainstream. Uh, it was a top 40 album for them in the U.S. It put them on a huge world headlining tour. Uh, had four singles from Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Why Can't I Be You, Catch, uh, Just Like Heaven, and Hot, Hot, Hot. Um, unfortunately, uh, Robert Smith became very uncomfortable with this newfound celebrity that um that came with uh, the success of um kiss me kiss me kiss me and he kind of felt that um basically people may have lost the point as to the reason why the band got together and the re and their uh the basis for their music um and it's, it's kind of like a double edged sword you want the success but once you achieve it how do you handle it? Can you handle it? And what do you do with it? Right? It's those three questions, right? Um, that occur. So he was adamant that um the music for the next album, which would eventually become disintegration, would veer towards more the darker gothic um edged kind of you know darker theme kind of music that they were gonna uh that they were famous for. A little footnote, uh Suzy Sue of Susie and the Banshees uh, sings back up on one of the tracks on the first disc called I'm Cold. And Robert Smith was um according to the research a very a brief member of the Susie and the Banshees band um for a very brief time. But I'm going to give you the background on Disintegration. Fantastic album produced by um, David M. Allen and Robert Smith, as Robert Smith would produce the majority of the albums. Um, reach, number, uh, reach number three in the UK, number 12 in the US, and number 22 in Canada. Okay. Um, it went two times platinum in America and gold in the UK and it sold worldwide uh, 4 million copies. So a fantastic album. In my notes I have here, uh, for me, the album has more of a darker atmospheric uh, feel. Uh, heavier drum presence. is a heavy drum presence on this album. Um, I'm going to go through who played on the album for you. Uh, in the in the group at this point, you had uh, Robert Smith on guitars, vocals, keyboards, six string bass, uh, Simon Gallup on bass and keyboards, uh, <clears throat> Paul um, Thompson, uh, if say the name wrong, I apologize, uh, on guitars. You have Boris Williams on drums and percussion, who plays the bloody hell out of the drums. Uh, Roger o O'Donnell on keyboards. And Lol uh, Tolhurst on other instruments. Um, Lol Tolhurst would eventually um, be fired from the band due to his increasing battle with alcoholism. Um, you know, it's never a good thing when this happens. Um, uh, David M. Allen produced the previous album, Hot, 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 uh, sorry, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, in 1987. So he would go on to produce this album as well. The keyboards that are used on this album, the palette, 
of keyboard effect, of sounds and textures. For me, act as um, <clears throat> they act as uh, the bedrock of the album uh, in terms of the music uh, arranged. Uh, almost they act as the foundation for the other instruments used on the album. Uh, the album starts as uh, twelve tracks, I should say, clocking in at seventy one minutes and I believe forty two seconds. So it's a long album. Uh, tracks range in length from like five minutes and change to nine minutes and nineteen seconds. So very long, uh, intricate uh, arrangements. Fantastic. Starts off with the uh, track "Plain Song." Um, and it starts off very quietly. The The music comes in very quietly. And the keyboards, again, are used as a scenic backdrop for the track. Beautiful melodic keyboards. Amazing. Just gorgeous. Um, track two is Pictures of You, one of the four singles from the album. The... Um, the track itself, I remember when it came out. Um, to me, he's basically saying to his partner or his girlfriend that he is in love with her and he's yearning for the day that they could be together again. It's got to be said, the theme for this album is one of internal angst, okay? Doubting of oneself doubting their place in society, doubting their ability to contribute to their, never mind the lives of the people around them, but to their own life. Can they sustain and keep going with what they've accomplished so far, or will they fall by the wayside? You know, uh, ties into the next track, track three, uh, Close Down. Very melodic synth passages on this very, intricate bass lines from what I can hear. And um, he's basically saying in this in um, in the track that he's slowly realizing that he's shutting down. And what you want from him as an individual, he's not sure he can give you, whether it be the fans, whether it be somebody like his partner, his wife, his family, whoever needs him. And he's basically telling you, I'm done, I'm depleted. Next up, track four is another single from the album. There were four singles from the album. This is the second one, Love Song. Beautiful guitar and organ-driven track. Heavy drums. Heavy drums. But the the and it's the shortest track. It clocks in at three minutes twenty nine seconds. And what he's saying in this track is, no matter what happens to him, he will always love that person that he is with. And no matter where he is, he will always love that person. Uh, track five, last dance. Uh, again, the guitars on this very heavy rhythm guitar. Not heavy in terms of uh, loud and in your face, but very present in the mix. Uh, it's almost like they pushed up the on the phasers. They they pushed up the phasers on the console to have the guitars come up um, very prominent in the mixes, and it's amazing. Um, next up is the next single, Lullaby. Very full, rich drum sound. Um, and what I like about the use of drums that Boris Williams plays on this, yes, he's got a heavy hand on the drums. The drums have a very full, rich texture sound, like a very full snare sound, okay? Um, but in some songs like Lullaby, they're kind of used as accents. It's, they're not used in the basic and the standard basic uh, standard uh, drum setup, you know, a bass snare, bass snare hit. They're used as more of um, percussive accents, and also on this track you hear a lot of what I can what I call cello flourishes, 
right? There are there are some cello sounds um, done, uh, whether they're done by keyboard or I believe they are done by keyboard, but but they're not heavy. They're not overly. Uh, they're not heavy-handed in in the use of cello, and they're just sort of like flourishes is the only way I can describe it. Uh, side two starts off with Fascination Street. Bloody hell. For me, this is the heaviest track on the album in terms of production, in terms of arrangement, very prominent bass sound, um, very heavy good rhythm guitar, almost has a, um industrial sound to me. Very early influences of industrial music coming in, um, whether or not it was industrial music was um, a label at the time. But I could almost hear Nine Inch Nails doing this. You know? Um, after, in Fascination Street, I do remember the video. I do remember the video. It was a very dark, uh, somber-looking kind of video. Um, and, and Robert Smith is very upfront in the videos eh, that they do for this album, for any of the albums, actually. Next up is uh, Prayers for Rain, track eight. Again, very guitar-laden. Um, and they use uh, a string ensemble on the synth that have an orchestra, an orchestrated feel to it. You know, um, track nine is this uh, the same deep water as you. And what he's saying in this song to me is basically that he's you're looking to him for answers to keep you going and to make everything okay for you. When he's telling the person that he's basically in the same boat as you are. He doesn't know the answers. He doesn't know whether or not he's going to make it through happily ever after or whether he's going to survive at all. And he has to worry about himself before he needs or before he can worry about anyone else. This is the longest track on the album, clocking in eight, nine minutes and 19 seconds. Uh, next up is the title track, Disintegration, a very prominent bass guitar on this track. Very heavy drums, prominent bass guitar. Um, when I hear the bass on this album, I'm automatically thinking of Peter Hook in New Order. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, very heavy, very moody, you know, um, almost like they're like, uh, almost like triple track in the bass. So like the bass on some of the tracks acts again as the keyboards also do, but they act like as like the bedrock of the track, uh, building up textures and mood, you know, atmosphere for the music. Um, track 11 is Homesick. <clears throat> Very piano and cello, piano and cello driven track. And what he's Again, this track is just saying that he's ready to go home. He's ready to retreat. He can't do it anymore. He's done. He's done. Um, track 12 is uh, a very beautiful track called Untitled. Very almost uh, atmospheric piece. Starts off with a beautiful melodic um, intro. And then the drums kick in. Again, Boris Williams on the drums for this is just bloody brilliant. Um, and then, yeah, that's, you know, and then on the end of the track, the band, back, you know, fades out and it's just the same melodic intro on the keyboards and, um, and then the fade out. It's beautiful. I mean, the use of keyboards on this album, the, the melodies, that uh, Mr. Smith comes up with on this is just fantastic. Okay. Just amazing. Um, and yeah, for me, listen, I've listened to this album about four times and every time I listen to it, I want to, I want to listen more. I want to hear more. Um, you can get this album on discogs. Obviously you can get this album on, um, on eBay, you can get a uh, version of this. You can get 
two versions. You can get a single disc version, the standard version for like 10 bucks on Amazon. You can get a uh, three disc version, which contains remixes and B-sides um, and um, demos for like $27.99 uh, through this is the track albums have been reissued to universal um so please guys check out this album it is fantastic it is amazing you can stream it also on youtube um coming up on the channel i've got three shows coming up to do on on saturday alone um saturday i'm doing a show with um Andrew Cox, we're uh, going to be listing our top three Pat Metheny albums. That's going to be really good because Pat Metheny is an artist. So it's really difficult to pick just three albums because he has a slew of albums. Um, on Saturday night, I'm doing a show with uh, Bill Schuster and Ryan Gavalier and uh, Bill's son is coming on the channel. We're going to be doing, first off, we're going to be discussing this little gem here we're going to be discussing the new Roger Waters Dark Side of the Moon Redux or Redo album and um, we're going to give our two cents or in that case five about it and also we are going to be doing a second video on our top three uh, greatest hits packages uh, with honorable mentions. So that's going to be really fun. So please stick around for that. Those shows are air, uh, taping on Saturday. They're going to air this coming week. Please uh, tune in for those. I'm going to be doing another episode with uh, uh, Peter Kent from the Lizard King channel. Uh, we are going to be doing a uh, Thin Lizzy album ranking. 12 albums. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to be good. So and I'm going to be doing another episode with Brian McFadden. We're turning the uh, Rush album, live album spotlight on uh, that we did on Rush, um, All the World's a Stage. We're going to turn it into a series. So we're going to be tackling next um, Exit Stage Left. So that's coming up. So please uh, click like and subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell to keep yourselves on top of any new content that I've got coming up. And please do in the comments down there, down below. Uh, please give me your uh, opinion on disintegration. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you like the cure? Do you not like the cure? I mean, for some people, they're an acquired taste. Um, I am getting to like them more and more, the more I listen to them. And I'm going to be diving into their albums quite a bit more. So there are quite a few to listen to. Um, so that's it for now. Please look after yourselves and one another. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye for now.